You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. In January, having been for sale for almost two years, Southampton were finally sold, with Sport Republic purchasing Zhao Ji Sheng's majority shareholding in the club for a deal worth around £100 million. But who are these new owners and what are their objectives? Well, first, the old owners. Zhao's time at Southampton will be remembered as a period of drift. He acquired his 80% stake back in 2017 and over the next four years would neither put any money into the club nor take any out. He was not a fluent English speaker, so very rarely communicated at all with the fan base, and his ownership coincided with a clear period of stagnation, both in on-field performances but also off-field processes. Neither Southampton's transfer acumen nor their ability to harvest their youth academy is anywhere close to what it once was. But that promises to change. Sport Republic Limited is an investment firm in the sports and entertainment industry. It's London-based and owned by Rasmus Ankerson, Brentford's former co-director of football, and Onrik Kraft, who spent the last 20 years investing in technology, telecoms, and media. Sport Republic is also backed by Dragan Solak, Serbia's third richest man, who built his fortune through United Group in Serbia after becoming a key provider of broadband, mobile and pay TV across eight countries. Solak is a well-known business leader in the region, especially in Serbia. Dr. Marko Milosavljevic, a professor of journalism at Slovenia's University of Ljubljana, told The Athletic. He's not a celebrity, though, and he doesn't court publicity. He's not Elon Musk. But because he owns major cable and media businesses all over the former Yugoslavia and in Bulgaria, he's a very obvious rival to the state-owned companies in those countries. And this makes him also a figure who is often targeted by different ruling politicians. The pro-government tabloids in Serbia hate him, because if you're not actively supporting the government, you are perceived to be an enemy. Peter Horrocks is a former boss of the BBC's World Service who now acts as an editorial advisor to United Group and he told The Athletic that Solak is very determined and savvy. He's a businessman, but he cares about his country. He believes objective, independent journalism is good for Serbia. He is not political as such. He has no ambitions to run for office, for example, but he does want Serbia to be well run. He's vilified by most of the Serbian media, but that's because the media is, directly or indirectly, controlled by the government. And he's very concerned about the country's return to authoritarianism and nationalism. That makes him a political figure in the eyes of the government. And he's also portrayed as being unpatriotic. However, he sees himself as Serbian first and foremost. He won't back down. Now, in an interesting detail, the state-run telecom company purchased the rights to show the Premier League in a deal which will begin in the 2022-23 season. It will run for six years and reportedly cost 600 million euros, nearly 10 times the value of the previous rights package, which was controlled by Solak's United Group organization. But that's a subplot. Solak is the lead investor in Sport Republic and their aim will be to construct a multi-club system in football with Southampton as a focal point. My partners and I have experience in long-term investments in the sport and entertainment industry, and Sport Republic has been founded to combine this expertise and deliver something unique to the market," Solak said in the club's takeover statement. Southampton has so many of the qualities we've been looking for in a major sports organisation. It has a great management team, excellent talent development, talented teams playing attracted football, and a dedicated fan base. Southampton will be a cornerstone of the organisation that we plan to build. So the emphasis will be on intelligence then. And it's clear that this will not be the kind of acquisition seen at Newcastle United, for instance, or Manchester City, where cash is used to bludgeon the club to the top of the game. Southampton will have to be smart. Unfortunately, Rasmus Ankerson has a record for being so. And that past is a better guideline for what may follow. Ankerson's relationship with Brentford ended in late 2021, but can be traced back to a meeting with the club's owner, Matthew Benham, in 2013. The pair quickly developed a solid relationship, and when Benham became the majority shareholder of Danish club FC Michelland in 2014, he installed Ankerson as their chairman. 
Mitchelland won the Danish Superliga title for the first time in their history in 2014-15, which prompted Benham to appoint Ankersen as one of Brentford's co-directors of football in May 2015. Having tested many of his ideas at Mitchelland, Ankersen helped to revolutionise the way Brentford operate. Famously, they recognised that the club had limited resources compared to their rivals in the championship and, with a data-led approach, shifted their transfer policy to focus on identifying promising young players with the potential to develop, who could then be sold on for a profit. He also played a role in the club's decision to abandon their academy in favour of a B-team and, with an extensive knowledge of Scandinavian football, Ankerson recommended the hiring of Thomas Frank as one of Dean Smith's assistant coaches in December 2016. He was also central to the talks that took place with agents and other clubs and reportedly drives a hard bargain. He never gives anything away, not even a penny, one agent told The Athletic. He's good to work with and he is fair, but he's a super tough negotiator. Now, Ankerson isn't expected to play an active role in the day-to-day -day running of Southampton, but it's hard to imagine that he won't provide input when it comes to recruitment. His biggest focus, though, will be Sport Republic expansion and the rolling out of the oversight of their multi-club strategy. In theory, at least, it puts Southampton in much more engaged hands. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do enjoy TIFO, then you'll probably also like The Athletic. If you watch our tactics videos, you should go and read Michael Cox. If you're into data, read Mark Carey. And if you're into transfers, it's David Ornstein. Plus, if you're a fan of any Premier League team, then there's a journalist dedicated to you, and you can try it for free for 30 days now by clicking the link in the description.